because then the war is not good for you. Did you think, oh no, not another shock? Not another what shock. are we going to do? Especially for us here in, in Africa, because Africa was vulnerable. So really, uh, this war could have created a serious, <laughs> serious catastrophe for Africa. As you know, Africa imports on a lot of other countries. Over eighty percent of what we consume in Africa in terms of food uh, is uh, is imported. That is one. Number two, you know, the effects of the war, especially as far as, say, for example, wheat. Which Africa imports almost 55 million tons per annum every year, and it really created a big you know, serious issue. Could you quantify that for us? What would it look like? Almost 80 percent of what we consume in Africa is being imported. Africa imported last year over 55 million tons of food. 40 percent of that, you know, uh, actually came from Russia and Ukraine. So the price of food in the last three years, for example, has more than doubled. So it is a serious issue. And if you look at what is happening today, I don't think we will see you know, any relief going forward. So my take on this is that Africa must make any words. We must try as much as possible, you know, to develop a workable, local solutions to our local problems, which means that we have to start at the value, we have to start producing. Because it's a work of profit. Are you, exactly. Are you industrious like you trying to fix that? Well, that is the issue. See, uh, Africa has sixty percent of the world's arable land. We have we have the, the landmass, you know, all these thirty square kilometers. We have a big one point four billion people. So we know that we are a huge, huge population in Africa. So we really need to look at what to be able to at least feed ourselves. So food security, as far as I'm concerned, is the most important thing. For us, because there are uh, quite a few concerns you know, from some countries, and it's not only so. You know, for example, some countries are concerned, you know, that you know, there's a lot of insecurity, you know, proliferation of arms, you know, from between countries, and also the fact that previous EDL, like EDLS and EAC, you know, arrangements have not really been successful. So there, we have those issues, and also, you know, the data migration. So. Some countries have concerned, but I believe it is an opportunity for Africa to actually come together and make this work. But it hasn't had an impact yet. The reality is that I haven't seen that much of it. And part of the reason is because we have a lot of infrastructure deficit in Africa. And for this to work, we really need to fix our infrastructure, you know, the ports, the rails, you know, and what have you. And for example, I had a vessel that loaded from Port Harbor to Lomi. It took almost Three weeks before the person could buy. So, really, it is an issue. So, we really need to fix our infrastructure space for this to succeed. Okay, so is it infrastructure? Is it policy? Is it all of those processes at the borders? Is the borders, you know, the, the ports, you know, the, the rails, I want to you, but the leaders need to also come together. And some of the countries in Africa are also really, you know, uh, not. Supporting this, I would say, for example, you know, and that is. You're talking about your country. No, I'm not talking about Nigeria, <laughs> but I will not mention the country. But the thing is, you know, some of the countries believe that you know, with this policy that they are losing, you know, revenue as far as tariffs are concerned. Of course, it is understandable. For example, I have a factory in Sokoto, which is very close to Niger border, right? You know, cement factory, and you know, if we Export to Niger and to Burkina Faso, for example, they get about three, four hundred kilometers from, from Sokoto. The price of cement even comes down because you have to pay the tariffs. But then again, the countries are actually losing tariffs because if it is coming from within the continent as you know, part of the African continental food trade arrangement, you will do to your tariffs and they're supposed to be paid. And that's so interesting. If you are trying to Protect their industries. One, there's the protection issue, and then two, there's the issue of tariffs. Some countries believe that if we have this arrangement, we will not be able to, you know, uh, make money as far as tariffs are concerned. But then what is happening is that if the price of cement, for example, in Niger, if you don't pay it in Nigeria or Niger, it is maybe 20, 30 percent less than what you sell, you say, for example, in Burkina Faso. So at the end of the day, yes, the government are making money as far as tariffs are concerned. But then the price of the commodity is much higher for the consumers in those countries. 
So that is what you need to balance, really. I want to talk about what you've been doing at the Boa Group. And actually, you've been so busy during the pandemic. I've been watching you very closely. I mean, you've listed some businesses, you're feeding some main business. You're talking about lithium. You're talking about commodities a lot. Um, and it kind of gives me you know, a sense of what you're banking on as future sectors, right? So you're thinking electric vehicles, you're thinking about commodities and hopefully some processing. Um, and you're also talking about infrastructure. Where's your mind at? And could you give us a sense of what businesses in the room could be doing to build resilience as these new uh, risks come to the fore? Thank you. Yes, to start with Boha, uh, it's a company established in Nigeria, and it's a proudly Nigerian, African, you know, foods, mining, manufacturing, and infrastructure uh, business, you know, and uh, with key investments in cement, sugar refining, pasta, flour milling, you know, construction, uh, oil and gas, amongst others. So on the cement business, you know, we have seven plants scattered up across you know, uh, Nigeria with various capacities uh, with a combined you know, capacity of 11 million tons as of today. We are commissioning two more lines next next uh, next year so that will you know give us some two million tons in total some two million tons per annum. And we decided two years ago you know to list you know all the cement business and as well as PLC and today we are one of the top five publicly listed companies on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. And 95% of our own materials come on locally from Nigeria. So that is the key, and that is what I keep you know, saying in terms of you know, trying to look inwards, you know, uh, add value to what we have, and process what we have. Because with all the issues that we have right now, our small business on Africa, to be able to do more, to be able to produce, Add value and invest. That is the only way we can actually do it. Do you? I mean, that is my opinion. Uh, and, and do you think that? I mean, you're talking about food security and agriculture. Is now the time to ensure that we see big investments in agriculture? Exactly. Is that what we need to build resilient businesses? On that, the yeah, that now is the time because again, as I said, you know, Africa sits on sixty percent huh, of the world's arable land, and more than anything, I think the most important thing is for us to be able to feed ourselves. Absolutely. Okay, we've got a few seconds left. I have to ask you this. Are you feeling optimistic? How are you feeling? I am. About the I am. With all this that's going on. Honestly, because Africa has so much. We have a lot of opportunities. We have so much going on for us in Africa. Africa, we have 30% of the world's you know, mineral and natural resources sit in Africa. So we really need to add value more than anything because we have the resources. And we can do it. We have good companies, you know, we have good people. You know, and we can do these things. It's, 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 it's not difficult, but we just need to come together and we just need to get the support of our leaders and be able to do more because we can do more. It's a huge, huge, you know, continent with lots of opportunities. You know, I mean, like if you look at, for example, all the mineral resources that are in the world, most of them are in Africa. We have some of them that you don't have anywhere else. Look at Congo, you know. The 40% of the world covered is in Africa, in fact, it's in the DRC. There's one man, half mine in the DRC, that is on mine, that is worth over 40, 50 billion dollars. So we have everything in Africa. 40% of the world's growth is in Africa. So we really need to harness these resources, add value, and be able to do more. And we can do that. Yeah, we, are you, we have incredible resources, and so begs the question how do we capitalize on, on all these incredible resources that we have? Abdul Samai Rabiu, the Executive President of the Boa Group. What a pleasure and honor to speak to you. And uh, I hope we've set the tone for the conference. We've got incredible conversations that will be coming up over the next two days. And I'm so delighted to be back with all of you. And I hope to say hello to most of you in the audience as well. A round of applause for the Executive President.